It's 10 o'clock. It's Saturday morning, and it must be the Urban Farming Institute in the city of Oakland Park. And we're very happy to be here with you this morning on Facebook Live, because we're going to be talking about one of the most important tools that you could have in the garden. In fact, it's the second most important tool for your garden. The first tool, of course, is going to be the five-gallon bucket. We talk about the five-gallon bucket a lot. If you don't have a five-gallon bucket, then you need to get one because it is, without question, the most important tool for your garden. But this morning, we're going to be talking about the second most important tool, and it's going to be the sprayer. And there are so many things that you can do with a sprayer. Most of them are done incorrectly. So we're going to show you what we do here so you can have an opportunity to have a really good experience when it comes time to use the sprayer in your garden. You know, most people think about sprayers as insect control. Oh, my. Well, if you're around the Urban Farming Institute for any time at all, you know that our whole purpose in life is to make the plant work really, really hard and grow really, really well so that we repel insects, and we can do that as a result of great soil nutrition. We don't feed the plant here. We talk about this a lot, too. If you're interested in feeding the plant, then you need to go to the big box store. If you're interested in feeding your soil, then you need to come here, and we'll show you how it's done. Because really, that's the best defense you can have against those pesky guys that show up in your garden. So when they do show up, and they will, we have a couple of things that we use. And if these tools here don't work, the insect's going to win. So BT, been around for a long time. It was actually developed by the Japanese back in 1901. This product has been used for over a hundred years years. It's a bacillus. It's a little bacteria and it works on all caterpillars. So if we have a, a caterpillar infestation on our kale or on our collards or wherever they may be, it's going to be BT. The other one we have is a garden insect spray. And you think about, oh no, it's a spray for insects. Well, guess what? It's organic. And here it is. It's the organic compound is spinosad. And this was discovered down in the Caribbean in a closed rum distillery. It was in the bottom of a barrel, and the scientist saw that and said, I wonder what it is, took it back to his lab, and, well, here it is. This is something out of the 80s, 1980s. This, of course, is neem oil. This is a terrific product that has been used for literally thousands of years. It too is organic. It's an herbicide, miticide, not so much an herbicide, miticide, fungicide, algicide, bactericide. It is a powerful, powerful tool in your garden. And of course, it's organic. So why not use it? It is very compatible with a soap. And we talk a lot about soaps, making sure that you use the right kind of soap and then, of course, if you don't want to do any of that kind of stuff, then you can use Safer, which we have here as well. And this is already pre-mixed, and you just add it to your sprayer, and off you go. It's pretty straightforward. But we want to show you how you can maximize the performance of your sprayer. And uh, so I'm just going to move these guys out of the way here and indicate to you that there are going to be some really important things to keep in mind as it relates to successful spring. One of the most important things that you can possibly do is making sure that your measurements are correct. And I can tell you that very few people have any idea how many ounces there are in a gallon. Now let's think about that. Would that be 32, 64? <laughs> Would it be 128? Would it be none of the above? Well, if you said 128, you're correct. But guess what? If you mix up a gallon of product to spray in your garden, you have mixed up too much. You simply need to mix up the appropriate 
amount of material to spray your garden. We're going to show you how to do that. One of the things that you need to have in your garden that you put in your five gallon bucket <laughs> is a shot glass. And this is a very good shot glass. You can get them online. You can get them here. You can get them most anywhere. And it has all kinds of graduations on the thing. And most often, you're simply going to use a quarter of an ounce of material. Quarter of an ounce. That's it. And how much will that quarter of an ounce make? Well, it's going to make 32 ounces. It's going to make a quart. And the way we show you how to use this sprayer, a quart is going to be more than sufficient. In fact, when we come under attack, and we do in the community gardens, we have 55 of these out here. When it comes time to go after the Lepidoptera, then I use BT and I will use a full gallon, but I will do 55 beds and have some of that product left over. And it's all because of technique. So the other aspect is in measuring, you want to be certain that you add the appropriate amount of water. In this case, 32 ounces, because 32 ounces is a quart. And most, most sprays, certainly the ones that we use down here, are measured out at one ounce per gallon of water. Uh, because you're only going to use a quarter of an ounce, you would only use a quart of water. So you would use some sort of device. It could be a graduated cylinder like this, or it could be most any other type of uh, measuring device. And you just add that to the sprayer. And then you're going to be ready to go. The other aspect of this is being certain, absolutely certain, that you don't mix more than you are going to use. Because what are you going to do with what's left over? You know, say, well, I've got a little bit in here. I think I'll save it till next week. Well, next week comes along, and what did you have for breakfast? You know, most people don't remember what they had for breakfast. I mean, certainly I don't. All I know is I didn't have breakfast, so it's, for me it's real easy. But just think about this. People have a real challenge with this sort of thing. They just forget what's in it. And let me tell you, does that happen here? Yes. Have I done classes on this before? Yes. I'm doing another class now, Facebook Live. We're going to reach thousands of people and hopefully <laughs> we'll, we'll be successful with that message to be sure that you measure appropriately and measure only the amount that you're going to use and then whatever you have not used, discard safely. And of course, be, safe, be careful to rinse out your sprayer appropriately. So here we go. Everybody knows what this is. This is the pump. I'm going to put this on here. Isn't that exciting? Aren't you glad you're paying attention to this? We hope you like these videos. You know, we do our best every Saturday to sort of make people uh, excited about the idea of gardening and to show how simple it is, because really, it's one of the most enjoyable and simple things that you could ever possibly hope to do. So I'm just going to pump this up. Now, most people would pump this up, and they would say, gee, John, I think that's all you need to do. I think that's probably pumped up enough. I say, okay, let's see. Hopefully you can see this. See? That's pretty good. Water the plants. Get all excited about this. Ooh, it's quite exciting. But guess what? This is probably the most in efficient way that you could ever possibly use a sprayer in your garden because you're going to use too much material and you want to be using only the appropriate amount that you have very carefully measured into your sprayer. Watch this pair of pliers. I'm, you know, the production people here at the Urban Farming Institute spare no expense. Go to, un, go to the ends of the world to find tools that make these demonstrations so effective. And so we're going to just tighten the sprayer, just this little head, tighten that down just a little bit. Yeah. Eh, probably tighten it down a little bit more. And to really get it tightened down, you're going to need to use pliers. And then we're going to pump it up. Now, you know, it, it'll... It, Looks pretty good, but look, let's pump it up. Let's really pump it up. Is this sprayer going to blow up? You know, the good news is if it does, I'll be the first one to know that. And, of course, you'll be the second to know that. It's all part of the Facebook Live experience, you know. So what do you think? Is that probably enough? 
look at this. It has this little red guy here. Now, some sprayers have a device, a pressure relief valve, that you have to turn. That's not such a good idea, because you've got to turn it to release the pressure. But here on this guy, you hear that? It's impossible, absolutely impossible, to blow up this sprayer. Ready? Watch this. It's magic. Look at that. We've gone from large droplets to micro droplets. Now, what is a micro droplet going to do? It's going to give us an opportunity to use a lot less product while maximizing the spray. Look, here's leaf. Think this is a colored green. That's it. I'm done. What could be simpler? Simply by tightening this little nozzle on the end, pumping your sprayer to a state that is really over pumped from the standpoint of what most gardeners would do and realizing that you're absolutely safe. So once you've done that, you would simply take the contents of whatever may be left. You're going to wash out your sprayer. And then you're going to pump it up again for the purposes of being certain that you can flush out the entire system. And then you can leave the pump just loose in the top of the sprayer and you'll be perfectly fine. I can assure you that this happens time and time again. We've had people that have called in a couple of years later after spraying the last time, and they said, John, I don't remember what was in my sprayer. What am I going to do? Get a new sprayer. You know, it's, a, it's just one of those things that <clears throat> makes the gardening experience really helpful, really beneficial, and really exciting. And you're using a lot less product. And oh, by the way, if you add just a couple of drops of soap, you can reduce the amount of material that you would use by as much as 25%. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I think you would. Listen, we hope these videos are important to you. We hope you enjoy them. If you do, well, you can, of course, subscribe. And if you really like this video, jam on that like button. We do these almost every Saturday. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more social media. And let me remind you of the Act Now series, Nourishing Ourselves Holistically. It's on the Urban Farming Institute YouTube channel. So tune in, and until next time, remember that the best day to plant a seed is today.